Welcome to the 41st annual American Burka Binder. The date is February 22nd, 2014, and we're very fortunate here in Hayward and Cable, Wisconsin, to be blessed with record snowfall. Unfortunately, also this winter, we've been blessed with record cold. And this morning's race of the American Burka Binder, it's going to be a cold day. But it's a beautiful trail. We've got lots of snow, so it's going to be really exciting. My name is Dennis Cruz, and I'm joined this morning with the privilege of talking about this race, Bill Pierce. Bill is the coach for the CXC Elite team. The other thing that I think is invaluable about Bill's experience as we watch this race is he is a former president of the foundation and in recent years has been responsible for the trail grooming. Welcome, Bill. Thank you very much, Dennis. It's great to be here. We got a great day set out in front of us. Uh, I've heard different adjectives used for what today could be as far as brutal, cold, longer. Um, it is gonna be a challenge today for everybody from the very first elite skiers that go over these hills to the very last person that finishes in Hayward. And you know, I think the exciting thing for me too, Bill, as we prepare to watch this great event, is we've got probably the deepest field of both domestic and international skiers. The Italians who have dominated this race year after year bring back four of the skiers who are one, two, three, four in last year's American Berkebiner, and a new skier we haven't seen. This is his first visit, Simone Perotti from Italy. We've got two Swiss skiers. We've got four French skiers who are going to be on course today. So it's going to be an interesting race with a deep international field. Okay, we're closing in on here. We got about 30 seconds. Elite Women Skate Wave. On We'd like race. to wish all of you a great start. Have a wonderful trek down to Hayward. All right, 15. 10, Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, seven six, five, four, three, two, one. And go! off they go! The 41st American Berkebiner is underway on the track to Hayward. Off they go. This marathon total right now, I believe prize money for both is for $45,000, which is uh, really a, it's a benchmark in what is uh, elite skiing here in North America. Uh, the, the prize for first American, 2,500 as a bonus, no matter where they finish in the field, is another reason that a lot of these elites have come here uh, to chase points and to chase money. Well, I think as you say, Bill, being in an Olympic year, I know for our U.S. skiers, there are some skiers that we would call being on the bubble, and that would be Caitlin Gregg, for example, Sylvan Ellison, Matt Leach. These are all guys and girls who clearly, had there been a larger number of U.S. skiers able to go to Sochi, would have been on that team. I'm sure they're anxious to get out here. As you pointed out, there's a lot of prize money on the line, so this is going to be really exciting. All right, we've got the start of the 41st American Burka Binder, February 22nd, the year 2014. What we are looking at is the elite men's field. There are approximately 200 skiers in this. We lined up the Fist Marathon skiers first. There is a small gap, and then we have the citizen skiers, but they are the very best of the American Burka Binder. These are the top 200 from previous years. Out on the course ahead of us, and my expectation is we might get to see them, are approximately 80 women. The women started at 8 o'clock, the men have gone off now approximately 20 minutes later at 8.20. And last year the women made it all the way, the leading women, to Main Street. So I think a big question, Bill, is going to be, do you think these guys can catch the women this year? It all depends strategy. It's a really tough conditions. The wind will play a huge part. Gusts were up in the 20s at the start field. Um, you can see a lot of strategy going on as far as who's gonna move first, who's gonna lead, and um, it'll play out really differently. The women, I would say, last year we guessed that they, they would get caught and they didn't. This year, uh, the strength of field matters a lot here. The women is a much smaller field, not as strong, not as deep, where the men, it is one of our deepest fields, and so it could be a quicker race. All right, Bill, they're coming along the river bottom of the Namakagan here from the start area. There's approximately, I believe, Bill, is it two kilometers, a fairly flat course? Two, two and a half. All right. And 
Bill, it looks like a U.S. biathlon suit right now. Obviously, a fairly easy pace as we look at the leaders. Do you recognize that skier? You, you got Wynn Roberts, originally out of Minnesota, skied for U.S. biathlon for a few years. Not sure really where he's at this, this time, but uh, he's setting the pace early on in the race. And once again, that bib number means that Wynn was one of the back skiers to be seated in this top 200. And interestingly, right now, he's leading. If you look across to his right shoulder, you see... The Italian suits one and four, that would be Sergio Binaldi and four, Florian Costner. And remember, those numbers are the position they finished last year in the American Birkebeiner. Now we're climbing up the infamous power lines. About how wide would you say this track is here, Bill? In a normal year, uh, we're about 90 feet wide on this. So it'll spread out four or five lanes wide and uh, people start seating themselves for when they get to the narrower part of the woods, 4K down. All right, we're approximately uh, to the first food station. And now coming to the front is Martin Kukul. Martin is from the Czech Republic in 2001. He was a world champion in Lati, Finland. He has had very high finishes here. He was fifth, obviously, last year from his bib number. Interestingly, coming into this in the Fist Marathon Cup, he is the highest ranked skier. He's sitting currently in the second position. But we've also got on course the third fastest skier in the cup so far, Benoit Chavez. He's been here numerous times. His highest finish is second place. We've also got Tom Reichert out of Germany. This is his first visit to the course of the American Berkebeiner, but he currently sits fifth. And he's a teammate. He's going to be in the same color suit as Kukul. And now, in fact, I think we see Benoit. Yeah, that's Benoit, bib number six. And he's moving to the front. He's had a lot of experience. I think this is his fourth American Berkebeiner. You get a feel from this view, Dennis, on how tough the power line is and the unrelenting hills of up and down. Uh, this is where they really kind of start to feel what the day is going to be like and whether they have it or they don't have it for the top. Interestingly, Bill, we see these bright red suits with a blue and white trim that look like Norway, but these are actually three French skiers that are wearing these team kits. That's uh, the, the first of those suits, I believe, is Christophe Poor Peroy, I, I apologize for the poor pronunciation, but I can recognize the first Frenchman, Benoit Chevet. What's interesting, Bill, is I got a chance to talk to the boys who are wearing those Norwegian suits, and I said, are you here to support Benoit? And they said, absolutely not. We are from France, we're from a different club, and we just as soon beat Benoit as allow him to win. Bill, who's this now at the front? This is Lex Trennan. Lex is out of APU, skiing for APU Alaska Pacific University in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, Lex has been on the circuit all dom uh, domestically all season long and is skiing very, very well. Again, the, this flex and grind are the most important today, and it's really hard to hit a grand slam uh, on cold weather with, with something that's going to stand out beyond anybody else. Here we got the sprint for the Prem at double O. We got Reichel and uh, Christophe Perrault. And it looks like the Frenchman in the Norwegian suit, Christophe, is going to take this Prem, even though it's very close. It's a great camera angle. Got him by about a foot with that right foot throw there. You know, the interesting thing is, you know, Bill, you and I living here and getting to ski on that trail, you really don't have the perception how long they've come up the hill that you make it to double O on that sprint line. No, that's about a two minute <laughs> climb. And then you gotta give it all just for uh, the preem there. It's That's tough and uh, depending where they feed you here, you see them, uh, getting a little bit away at double O, but again, it's all timing and how you feed. So Bill, you would think it's way too early. I mean, Kristoff's opened up a little gap with that sprint. Do you think he's gonna keep the pedal to the metal? Or it's hard, I mean, this it's deceptive. The next uh, 15K down to the brook is, is probably the easiest part of the course. The, the elevation drops pretty consistently and uh, there's really no big climbs in this next 15K. Yeah, if you, if you look at Kristoff, he's looking back, he's taking his time. I, I think he's waiting for some help. He just passed a couple more women from the elite women's start. A 
It's their infamous picnic table hill that they're going down right now, and uh, yeah, they're, they're they're just at halfway right here. That's that's kind of the conditions today. You can get away, and no one's going to panic on it because the conditions are so much slower that uh, it just takes too much energy to do this uh, event here alone today. It's it's going to be a, a tough one to uh, try and think you can break away. Look, the, the it is thinning out. It's stretched out. We're down to maybe eight, nine guys here in the lead pack, and, and we're just through halfway. So that's just a sign of how, how fast the, the attrition was today. That uh, To be at last year, probably 25 guys came through double load, and now we're down to about 10. And once again, it's been pretty consistent. We see, uh, well, here's a newcomer to the front of the race. That's the team of Sun Valley, and I think, yeah, that's Matt Gelso. Uh, Matt's been skiing well. He had a great result out at Boulder Mountain Tour about a month ago, was second there, and last weekend at the Super Tours in um, St. Paul Battle Creek, he had a win and uh, another podium finish. So he's he's been skiing strong the last four weeks. Actually, I can give you a little insight into Matt. He's one of my house guests. So I had breakfast with Matt before the race. I said, how do you feel? He says, I feel good. I'm going to have a good race. And obviously, right now, he's looking great. He's at the front of the train. He's pulling a strong Euro field. The Italians are there. Kukul's there. Reichert's there. Benoit Chavez there. These are all the studs of the Fist Marathon Cup. And right now, he's allowed Simone Parati to go to the front. But he's, he looks comfortable. Some of these athletes, like Benaldi, uh, like Santos, they've been here so many times, I'm sure he has a clear understanding of what to expect. In fact, the Italians and many of these skiers have been in the Cable Hayward community for almost a week. And I know uh, uh, Chelsea Holmes from the same team as Matt Gelso had never seen this trail, but in several days she skied, not at one time, but in increments the whole course, so she'd be well familiar with the hills of the American Berkebeiner. A lot of looking around, some feeding going on. Again, they're just uh, jostling and, and uh, seeing who's here and, and what's going to be left in this race. But uh, you, you can start to notice here, we got, we're got we south of double O now, and uh, we just picked up two classic tracks at double O. So um, you get them feeling out the track, seeing where their skis are fast. This looks like a little tempo of surge by Simone Parati for the Italians. If you had to say there was a break effort, this is it. This is Kukul leading the chase to bring him back. One thing you know for sure, it's not going to be an Italian at the front of that chase group. No, they'll let, if, if their skier can get away, they'll let him get away and make the others work. And then they'll still have three for the, for the remaining finish push. Pace is definitely quickened here. But as you pointed out, Bill, they closed it down pretty fast. You know, with the extended time out here skiing, and, and that's why so much energy and brakes is expended and used, and, and it is not easy to get away in slow conditions. And, and to do it is uh, very risky, even with 20 kilometers left to go. Now coming to the front, last year's winner, Sergio, Sergio Binaldi. And that's a good look at a team effort. You know, you, you see uh, uh, the first Italian push it off, and then Binaldi, uh, you know, once he lets up, he'll just pick right up, and, and they'll just keep uh, cycling through their four athletes and just pushing the pace, whether it's to break it up permanently or just to string it out. You're absolutely right. One of the people chasing was Kuko. First he was chasing Parati of Italy. Now he's having to chase down Binaldi of Italy. Gives it a push, looks back, and then waits for the next guy to come through.
This is Christophe Perot, out of Italy. Excuse me, I, he confuses me. He's out of France, dressed as a Norwegian. Dennis, they just went through the 30 kilometer mark, so we're still 20K away. Um, they've got about 8K of really easy skiing in front of them here, and then, then the five toughest climbs in this event happen, and that's after 38 kilometers from the brook uh, all the way to the lake, and that's where a lot of breaks happen. Here again, I think they're just posturing, uh, you know, testing the field, see who is, who is on today, who has good skis, but a uh, little, little bit of an effort here, and. Uh, it is stringing it out pretty good. Bill, as we look down the course, would you anticipate there would be more of an attempt at, say, Bitch Hill or after 77, the very last big climb when you get to the top and you have an overlook of Hayward? It's the climb, the, the last big test you can do that is at, at uh, the climb after 77. That's the longest climb on the course. It's just over a kilometer long. Um, today is a little different though. Crossing Lake Hayward is not going to be easy. You got about a 15, 20 mile an hour headwind and um, that would be tough to do alone today. These green and black suits we see of the women, that's from the great program out of Crassbury, Vermont, the green team. Also, I just caught a glimpse of a woman in black and blue, that would be APU. And I know uh, Rosie Brennan's out here, Matt, excuse me, the APU skier. Here we come into the lead pack of the women, it looks like. That's Chelsea Holmes, Caitlin Patterson, Kate Fitzgerald, Rosie Brennan. Looks like we've the elite men have just caught the elite women and are going through Gravel Pit Food Station. And that chain of elite women, we got Caitlin uh, Greg leading the, the climb up out of Gravel Pit. And right behind her in the orange suit is a Finnish skier, that's Sini Alusnimi, who we passed just seconds ago. She's, the, in the summer, the national champion for mountain bikes of Finland. And right behind her is the great Italian lady, Antonella Comfortola, who is the top-ranked Fist Marathon Cup skier in the women's field coming into this race. Looks like a, a few more of the elite men came back together. Looks like we got Lex back on the lead pack. Looks like about eight guys where it was down to about five. And climbing this hill out of gravel pit, you can see Caitlin is uh, hooked on to the elite men here. They're hitting right about 32 kilometers. So uh... you're right, there's Caitlin bringing up the back of this pack and I don't see any of the other women. So it looks like she may have dropped the Italian and Finnish and American girls who were all together before the men came through. Guy we haven't seen since early in the race, Costner has stepped up in front here. It's interesting, isn't it, Bill? We've seen Binaldi at the front, we've seen Costner at the front, we've seen Parati at the front. The Italians are passing the torch, so to speak, taking poles at the front. Total team, total team today with the Italians. They're skiing really well. The guy that seems to have to mark every one of these, though, is Kukul, and he is talented. He has a great reputation as a distance skier. He comes into this the highest ranked Fist Marathon Cup skier, but I would think this is going to be tiring. I mean, just every time I see a break off the front, particularly Italians, it's Martin Kukul trying to chase it down. Yeah, and Martin just got a pull. He obviously was doing a great job with a broken pole, and now he's at the front. And you can see his poles do not match. It's funny, he was looking at his wrist there. I don't know if he was looking at his time or his pole strap. Here they're crossing Mosquito Brook, and uh, this is where a lot of athletes will say the race starts. This is the first climb. It's about three quarters of a K long, and there's five of them that relent in the next four K. Well, as I look down that line, we see Kukul at the front, then right behind him, the Italian Simone Parati, then out of the France in the Norwegian suit, Christophe Perrault. Then we see another Frenchman, 
from a different team, Benoit Chevet, and then another Italian. Top of the first climb here out of the brook, 39 kilometers right here. Still pretty much together, the line's strung out. Not a lot of room to pass. If you look at this, we're about a skate lane and a half wide only, so it's, it's a lot of strategy gonna happen between here and the lake. You get a sense of the wind, Bill, as you look at the snow that's being kicked up by the snowmobile that's filming this race for us. Yeah, I think the toughest part, the start this morning was really extreme, just getting ready to go, not warmed up, and having to stand in a 20 mile an hour wind. But when we hit this lake, they're gonna feel the brunt of the gusts here. Okay, I see the German, Reichert. I see Benoit, I see the Italians, I see Peroy the Frenchman, but right now I'm not seeing any American, unfortunately. No, as we came across uh, through those fields at Duffy's, um, just before we get on the lake right here, uh, it's thinned out a little bit. That was a big push up the hill at 45 and it thinned it out. We're down to six guys left. Um, you can see a seventh just getting onto the lake. I believe that's Matt Gelso, um, and uh, we'll see what happens here on the water. It is Matt, and he's coming on strong. You know. You could see these guys when he hit that lake and that headwind, there was a real hesitation. <laughs> Nobody wanted to go to the front. Everybody's just looking over their shoulder at this point and testing and just seeing who's, who's gonna be here. Well, that's good news for our American friend out of Sun Valley. And Matt has caught him. He's comfortable right now. He's, got, he's on the far right side. He's fourth in position but you want as much protection on the wind of the lake as possible. Went from a single file to two and three wide here, just trying to get, get position for the final move. Here we're only about a kilometer and a half out. We're halfway across the lake and here Reichel is starting to make a move for the finish. This is our friend, he's out of Oberwiesenthal, Germany, and he's looking really strong. I think he's given up any idea of forcing anybody else to pull him into the wind. He's willing to go to the front Christophe Perot, the Frenchman, is right behind him. And then we've got three Italians lining up. We're within about 500 meters here, Dennis, and uh, they're going for it. They're posturing. The trail gets a little narrow here as we come off, so once they hit off the lake, they only have about 400 meters to make their final sprint, and they're gonna posture here on the lake and get into position to get off. So we've got Tom Reichert out of Germany in first place. Now we've got Sergio Binaldi of Italy in second. In that big red suit from France, Christophe Perrault. All right, they've turned the corner onto Main Street in the front. He's the German who came across the lake in first place. This is Tom Reichert, bit number 11. Also, we've got Sergio Binaldi. But coming up on the outside, it's Simone Parati. Now, it's just a question. It looks like Tom Reichert's gonna take it. In second place is gonna be Simone Parati, and then the Italian, our winner last year, Sergio Binaldi. A slight gap, and another Italian comes across the finish line, Florian Costner. We've got Benoit Chavez. He's coming in and right behind the first American. This is Matt Galso out of Ketchum, Idaho. He's gonna win the Tony Wise Award. Minneapolis, Matt Lee 
former champion comes across with Caitlin Craig. And I thought, I have a win, I must go with the bond. And nobody was lost on the end. I think right now you're waiting for a third in the Pittsburgh as the winner of the American Berkebiner Skate Race, she would receive $7,500. This year we instituted the new Tony Wise Award, which is an additional $2,500. So Caitlin just doubled up $10,000. Congratulations to our champions.